Hello, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Cobb's Corner. If this is your first time listening, then welcome, and to my returning listeners, welcome back. On this episode of Cobb's Corner, we will be reviewing Creed. If you guys remember, we reviewed all six Rocky movies. We reviewed Rocky, Rocky 2, II, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, uh, Rocky, we just did Rocky Balboa, and now we are on to the Creed series, or trilogy as it's known as of the recording of this podcast. So, Creed is a 2015 box- boxing film in which the former heavyweight champion Rocky Balboa serves as a trainer and mentor to Adonis Johnson, the son of his late friend and former rival Apollo Creed. Adonis Johnson is the son of the famous boxing champion Apollo Creed, who died in a boxing match in Rocky IV, which came out in 1985. Go check out that episode. Adonis wasn't born until after his father's death and wants to follow his father's footsteps in boxing. He seeks a mentor who is the former heavyweight boxing champion and former friend of Apollo Creed, the retired Rocky Balboa. Rocky eventually agrees to mentor Adonis. With Rocky's help, they hope to get a title job to face even deadlier opponents than his father. But whether he is a true fighter remains to be seen. This movie is directed by Ryan Coogler, uh, written and directed by Ryan Coogler, um, also written Ryan Coogler who co-wrote this movie along with Sylvester Stallone and Aaron Covington and stars Michael B. Jordan, Sylvester Stallone, and Tessa Thompson. Let's go to Cobb's Corner. Feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gon' feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving So Creed starts off in the year 1999 And we see how young Adonis Johnson is in what looks like a juvenile detention facility and a fight breaks out and him and the other kid are separated he is visited by uh i want to say her name's marie marie creed um apollo creed's wife and she agrees to take adonis in and raise him and pretty much adopt him um so so, so Adonis becomes the, I guess, adopted son of Marie Creed. Um, Apollo Creed, Adon- Adonis, Adonis Johnson, bit of context. Um, Adonis Johnson, he is the product of Apollo Creed's infidelity. Apollo Creed had an affair with... Uh, Adonis's mother, whose last name was Johnson, and you know Adonis or Donnie for short. Donnie typically goes by Adonis Johnson. Um, but he was raised by Marie Creed. And fast forward to, I guess, present day, maybe early 2010s, uh, 2014, 2015. And uh, we and we see how, although he didn't have to, Adonis chose the boxer's life. We see that he's at a bar fight in, or no, <laughs> not a bar fight night, like like an actual boxing match that's in a bar in Mexico, in I want to say Tijuana. And this is similar to how the very first boxing match that we saw, Rocky fight in on screen very first on screen boxing match of rockies in the first rocky movie was in some like church basement if you remember from the very first rocky movie where he fought spider rico um so we're starting to see kind of the parallels between you know rocky and creed and 12 hours 12 hours after the fight which adonis wins you know he's now at this point 15 and 0 and and he wins this fight and then goes back to his desk job. He's got like a job at some firm. And after getting a promotion, he resigns. He submits his resignation. He tells his boss, you know, thank you for everything that you've done for me. 
this career is just not for me. And he officially, officially chooses, again, chooses the boxer's life. You know, he had, you know, gone to school. Uh, he had, not sure if he, like, graduated college, but, you know, he, he at least, you know, graduated high school and possibly attended college. So, you know, he had, you know, some book smarts, some, you know, school, some years of school un un under his belt. And which is not something that, which Rocky Balboa, he only ever made it to the ninth grade. He never graduated high school. Um, so he had, he had the knowledge and like he didn't have to fight, but he at this point chooses the boxer's life. He goes back home to, goes back home to his mom's house and then he finds on YouTube footage of Super Fight 2 from Rocky 2, the rematch between Rocky and Apollo, and he starts to kind of imitate Rocky along, along, like, alongside the screen, he starts to, like, Im imitate Rocky, and, and so, he visits the Delphi gym, which is the same gym where Apollo Creed was trained, and the, the, the same gym that we saw in Rocky 3, and the, the gym has now been passed down to, um, Duke Jr., um, Duke was the trainer who trained, who trained Apollo in Rocky's 1, 2, and 3, or, no, train, train, trained Apollo in Rocky's 1 and 2, and then trained Rocky in Rocky's, um, 3 and 4, so his son, Duke Jr., has taken over ownership of the Delphi Gym, and Donnie shows up one day, and we see that he's kind of this, like, cocky, you know, bit of a bit of a hothead you know he says you know here's the keys to my mustang outside any of you can land a clean hit it's yours and so he goes through one he doesn't even put on his headgear like he goes through one boxer and you know boxer's not able boxer's not able to um not able to land a clean hit but then along comes danny wheeler who is the number two ranked pound for pound boxer in the world number two ranked light heavyweight boxer in the world and Danny Wheeler, so for this, so for this fight, Donnie actually puts on his headgear, and you know he is just outmatched by again the number two boxer in the world, and you know he gets knocked down by Danny Wheeler, he loses his Mustang, so really Donnie is humbled by that uh, experience. So then he goes, he goes over to. And, and Duke still refuses to train Adonis. Even after all that, Duke says, I'm not going to train you. Donnie moves over to Philadelphia. Move, moves to Philadelphia. And he goes and he finds Rocky Balboa, who if you remember from, well, if you remember from Rocky VI, from Rocky Balboa, that Rocky is now living a quiet life as a restaurant owner named after his late wife. So he's out of the ring you know officially out, out of the ring and so Adonis he shows up to Rocky and you know he points out like there's a photo from the 10th round of the first of his first fight against Apollo um, a shot a shot from the from from round 10 of super fight number one is framed on the wall and you know he's saying all this stuff about 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 rock about about apollo and how rocky you know he was the the champ the two of them they were both you know greatest of all you know greatest champ because two of the greatest boxing champions of all time and you know rocky points out how time beats everyone you know time is undefeated you know time time beat apollo creed you know essentially you know creed he got old he got slow and then rocky asks how do you know all this he, he, he knows about the rumored third fight that we saw at the end of Rocky 3 and at the beginning of Rocky 4. The behind closed doors, no press, no media, just Rocky and Apollo. A third fight that they had behind closed doors that I guess was rumored. Was rumored that, and it's actually painted. That final shot of Rocky 3 is actually painted on, 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 the, on the back wall. Um, <laughs> which may or may not show up in the uh, trivia portion um, late, late, later on in this episode. I'm not, 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 not entirely sure if anybody 
pointed that out on IMDb. But Apollo, but um, Donnie, he says how like I know about the third fight, and then Rocky's like, "How do you know all this stuff about me and about Apollo? Like, are you like his cousin or something?" To which Donnie replies, "I'm his son. I need you to train me." And Rocky says, "Like, hey, I don't do that anymore." And which is a callback to Rocky Five when he trained Tommy Gunn. Check that episode out. Um, <laughs> and he initially says no. He initially says, like, look, I can tell by the way that you talk, you've, you've gone to school, you know, so why do you choose the fighter's life when you don't have to? You see, and then, and then Adonis says, like, I don't have a choice, which Rocky says, you always have a choice, you know, I had the choice, you know, when your father was in the, when your father was in the ring, when your father was in the ring, I had a towel in my hand, I could have thrown it in, and I didn't, and... I'm pretty sure, you know, and I'm pretty sure your father would want to be, would want to be here with you today. I'm pretty sure he would want to be alive for you today to be, to be there with you. Um, so, but then, but then Adonis says, you know, what, what if, you know, what if, what if you did exactly what Adonis wanted, wanted you to do? Maybe he wanted to go out like a fighter. Maybe you did everything right. And... In Creed 2, we will see how Rocky has had this enormous guilt for that night. That infamous night where Apollo was killed in the ring, fighting fighting I Ivan Drago. How he's felt guilty about it for years. That's a theme that will come up again in the sequel. Um, so stay tuned for uh, Creed 2. And... So eventually... Uh, you know, Rocky, he comes around and, and 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 Rocky shows up to Mighty Mix Gym, which he no longer owns. I think the, the gym was willed to him. It, it was willed to either him or his son. So he, like, reopens the gym in Rocky V. We don't see the gym in Rocky Balboa. And now that Creed has rolled around, he's not the owner. I think somebody else is the owner. Maybe Sparino? Who... Yeah, might have been, might have been, um, Spur Spurino, who, um, his son is actually, um, a ranked, a, a ranked, uh, fighter, who we'll see again soon. Rocky shows up to the gym, and, you know, he's finally, I guess, <laughs> brought out of the shadows by Adonis Creed, and eventually, eventually, um, eventually they're, they're able to... Eventually, they're, they're able to agree to allow allow Donnie to fight his first, like, official, like, professional fight against uh, Leo Sperino, who's another uh, light, who's in his weight category, you know, light heavyweight. Um, Leo Sperino's father says how, says, says to, says to Donnie how you weigh about it, you, like, you weigh 180, you get down you get down to 175 and we'll work something out and so <laughs> so Donnie agrees so Rocky agrees to allow Donnie who at this point professionally is under the nickname Hollywood Donnie Johnson that's kind of the nickname that Sperino gave gave Donnie on his first day his first day at Mighty Mix they ask him, like, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from uh, Los Angeles. Like, Hollywood. So, and then it just stuck. So we got Hollywood, Donnie Johnson against, I want to say, the Lion, Leo, Sperino. So, so um, we get a nice little short training montage. Um, Rocky trains. <laughs> Rocky wakes Adonis up at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. And they have to run to the Front Street Gym um, in North Philly. And because Rocky says, you know, I don't want you training in the same gym as, your, as the guy you're going to be fighting. So they go to the Front Street Gym and Creed is introduced to Stitch, the best, you know, cut man in the business, along with, along with um, a few of his training partners. You know, one of the guys who's hold, holding, the, holding the pads. And, and meanwhile... You know, again, the Creed, Creed, he learns to be coachable. 
you know, while he's doing a sparring match with one of the trainer's sons, you know, the two of them, they start actually going at it, and they have to be pulled apart, to which Rocky comes over to Donnie, and he says, it's a bit of a learning curve, you see, you see now, when you're talking, you see, it's, it's impossible for you to ever learn anything as long as you're talking, like, it's a fact of life, as long as you're talking, you're not listening, and you're not learning, so, <laughs> so the two of them, you know, they apologize and then they start, you know, working, they start working, working together and we see how like there's Team Creed is, be, is being formed, you know, we're starting to see uh, team, team Creed along with Rocky and, and um, you know, Rocky's having the Donnie, he's having Donnie run, he's having Donnie uh, run around catching, the, catching those chickens like we saw, I think it was in Rocky 2 when Mickey had made Rocky <laughs> catch those catch those chickens he had to like catch a chicken in like 30 seconds so so it says so rocky's doing the same thing with creed and we get a nice little training montage and you know we start to see a sort of uh lighting of the next torch with adonis with the with adonis creed or Adon again donnie johnson as he's currently known and Creed, he now has he now has a girlfriend. Uh, Donnie Donnie now now has a girlfriend, uh, Bianca, who lives two units, like maybe two floors below him in the same apartment building. Bianca, who's a local artist in Philadelphia. And fight night arrives. Fight fight night arrives, and it's you know Hollywood Donnie Johnson versus the Lion Leo. Spur Spurino, and before the fight, Spurino's father and trainer, he pulls Rocky aside and says, "Now I know why you came out of the shadows. This kid, he's Creed's son. I make I make calls I make calls to Los Angeles. He's Creed's son. You know, it's like that's you know Ad Ad Adonis Creed's son. It's like now I know why you came out of retirement. To which Rocky says like, hey, you know, can we just keep this between you and me? You know, to which Spurino says, hey, you know." Your secret, your secret, your secret tape with me. The fight goes on, and Rocky and 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 uh, I think it only goes for like two rounds. And after the first round, Creed, uh, Rocky gives Creed some like he he gives Creed like some some sort of advice. Again, check out check out these boxing matches. <laughs> um, he gives he gives Creed he gives he gives Donnie some sort of advice that apparently his father Apollo Creed had. <laughs> had a move that Apollo Creed had done on Rocky way back when. He's like, you know, your old man tried this on me and it worked, so now I'm giving this advice to you. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, Donnie is able to knock out Spirino in the second round. And he's able to, not, he's able to knock, knock out Spirino in the second round. And Donnie's won his first professional fight. The next morning, the next morning, a news article comes out that he that Donnie Johnson is the is the biological son of the late Apollo Creed, and so this is like common knowledge just in the world now, and like and like Bianca is kind of mad that he wasn't upfront with her about it, and and so. And so now that now that this is common knowledge, and at the same time, Danny Wheeler, Danny Stuntman Wheeler, who was going to, who was going to, um, who's going to fight Pretty Ricky Conlon. Now, Pretty Ricky Conlon is you know faithful son of Liverpool, who he is the current light heavyweight champion of the world, and. He has a seven-year prison sentence looming over him, so he's about to go. So, he, so he, so this is to be his last title defense before he goes to prison for seven years. And so, it's Conlon versus Wheeler. You know, again, Wheeler, the same guy who was able to knock down Donny and win his Mustang. You know, Danny. Danny Stuntman Wheeler, who, again, ranked number two in the world, as, I, as I've said in previous episodes, as the heavyweight champion of the world. If you're ranked number one, you have to fight somebody. You have to fight the person who's, like, right underneath you, who could possibly take away 
your title. That's how you maintain your reputation and maintain your status as the best in the world, the best pound for pound fighter in the world. So the night before the fight, you know, at the at the weigh in, you know, the two of them they exchange some words and then Conlon actually like punches Wheeler, who then suffered a broken jaw and had to pull out of the fight and plan to sue the WBC. So as of now, Conlon has no real um Conlon has no opponent for him to defend his for him to defend his um his heavyweight title one last time before before he before he gets locked up before he spends his prime years in prison and then the new story about about Donnie Johnson being Creed you know being being the son of Creed comes out and and so then so then uh, he so then Conlon's manager, Conlon's manager contacts Balboa with the proposition for with the proposition for Donnie to fight pretty Ricky Conlon. And the two of them meet in the restaurant. They agree on the condition that Donnie change his name to Adonis Creed. Now it's not specified in the movie whether or not whether or not Adonis ever had his name legally changed to Adonis Johnson like whether or not like legally his name maybe like legally his name was Adonis Creed but he always just went by Adonis Johnson because and even as he was explaining to Bianca how when he just tells people that he's Adonis when he just uses his mother's last name his mother's last name was Johnson and he says how like I want to make it on my own and build and create my own legacy and when I say that I'm a Creed people look at me differently people look at my father differently and so for years he just denied that he was a creed and he always just went by johnson you know again donnie johnson so the formality was that adonis changed his name to a to adonis creed at least professionally changed his professional name to adonis creed so adonis agrees adonis agrees to change his name to creed and to fight Conlon, Rocky agrees to train him, and, you know, they start training, and then eventually, one, one, one night they're, one night they're training, it's just, I think the, the, the rest, the rest of the team goes home, they're at the Front Street Gym, and it's just Donnie and Balboa in the ring, and, you know, they're sparring, you know, they're, you know, training, and then all of a sudden, Rocky runs over to the trash can and throws up, and then he tries to get up and walk again. He falls down. And so Adonis rushes him to the hospital. And they keep him there. I think they kept him there overnight. He, he had some... He had some... Uh, tests that they... Some tests that they need that they needed to run. You know, even though even though Rocky's trying to get out of there. He's like, you know, hey, you know, we need to train. You know, to which, to which Donnie's like, hey, 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 relax. You know, let them run their tests. And so... So yeah, you know, they ran their tests and Rocky comes out of the comes out comes out comes out of the hospital and I think the next day while he's at the gym, he gets a phone call from one of the doctors that apparently that you know they need him to come back because there's something they gotta tell him face to face. And apparently Rocky has contracted a form of lymphoma. Uh, lymphoma, which is, which I understand is a form of cancer, and in this scene, it's confirmed, it's confirmed that Adrian, Adrian Balboa, Rocky's wife, that she had died of cancer uh, back in 2002, which is something that I think is explicitly stated here in Creed. I don't think it was mentioned in Rocky Balboa. I think in, in Creed, we find out that you know, Adrian had cancer, and she died of cancer. She did, and, and she had done chemotherapy and all that. Uh, so upon this realization, you know, Rocky he takes the pamphlets and then he just walks out of the doctor's office. You know, he says, you know, hey, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not doing this cancer treatment. I've I've been down this road before. I've seen it get uglier than ugly, and you know, I'm I'm not putting myself through that. If I'm if I've only got a few months left to live, then so be it. 
and so he walks out of the uh, he walks out of the office, and then he shows uh, he shows back up to the gym later on, and you know him and <laughs> you know him and Adonis are kind of cracking jokes. Adonis said like, "Hey, that senior bus was running late," and um, so as Donnie's packing up, he finds in Rocky's jacket pamphlets for cancer treatment. And then he, and then Rocky comes in and Adonis says like, is this for real? Like you really have cancer? To which, you know, Rocky says like, I'm not, I'm not doing no chemotherapy. I'm not doing no cancer treatment. And, you know, and, and, and then, and then, uh, Adonis, Adonis says how like when were you gonna tell me this you know like you're supposed to be my trainer it's like you could die to which Rocky's like I'm okay with that and to, to which Rocky says so I'm just some bum from so I'm just some bum from the neighborhood then and you know and then Rocky goes into this whole spiel on how like his wife had cancer and how if he could take everything that was good in his life and like put it into like a bowl or something and say here let me have one more day with my wife how he would die a happy man then and there and he's always said how if he ever breaks or you know if he if he's ever injured or broken like he's a driver break I'm not gonna fix it because everything that I had in life has moved on you know his wife has died his best friend Paulie has died at this point and you know everything that he has in life has moved on you know he even has a strained relationship with his son you know his son has moved up to has moved moved to Vancouver and he and he tells Donnie you've got a future I've got a past my future is up on that wall back there my name on that wall alongside all these all those other boxers all right you got a future I got a past you know? and he even said something along the lines of like we're not a real family that was just in our heads and so so Donnie storms out and then Rocky immediately regrets what he said. He's like, oh, what'd you do? What'd you do? Why'd you say that? Uh, Bianca's headlining a show that night, and Creed gets into a fight with the headliner, and he ends up getting locked up. He ends up getting locked up, and you know, Rocky goes to see him, and you know, Creed just tells him, you know, get out of here. It's like... You know why? Why am I? Why am I fighting Pretty Ricky Conlon if you're not gonna, you know, fight as well? So the two of them they kind of depart for a little while, and then Creed tries to apologize to Bianca, and then Bianca essentially says, "How you got a lot going on in your life? I got a lot going on in my life. So let's kind of let's kind of keep our distance for a little while." So. Creed goes back to Rocky and says, you know, I fight so long as you fight, you know, I, you know, I'm going to continue to train, I'm going to continue to train to be the best and to beat the best, you know, to beat uh, pretty Ricky Conlon, so long as you agree to do this cancer treatment, so long as you agree to fight as well, you fight, I, I'm only fighting if you fight, so, so um Rocky agrees to agrees to do the agrees to do the cancer treatment and agrees to train to train Creed. We get a nice training montage, you know, with I guess the new Creed uh anthem or theme song if you could call it that. And we get a nice little training montage which is followed by you know press conference between Adonis Creed and pretty Ricky Conlon and and so <laughs> and you know like Creed you know Conlon he's like taking some jabs at Creed saying he's like essentially a nepo baby of of um boxing and like he's an overnight success because he's a Creed and how Conlon doesn't come from wealth he doesn't come from the you know his father wasn't a boxer he said like oh my father worked at the docks you know Creed's father you know, Creed's father was the world heavyweight champion. That's the only reason why he's even going to be in the same ring as me. And so, you know, he's pretty much a phony. He's a fake Creed. And so, so yeah, you know, press conference. And then we don't actually see the way in, I don't think. Yeah, we, we, we don't actually see the way in to this fight. 
fight night arrives, well, the night before the fight, um, Bianca shows up to the hotel, you know, she shows up and, you know, to give her support, to be there for, to be there for Adonis, and, and, uh, just before the fight, the night, the night of the fight, there's a wrapped gift in, in the locker room, and it's a gift from Adonis's mother, and it's a, it's, um, boxing shorts that say the word Creed. Well, first, she wrote, like, a little note. A note that says, um, build your own legacy. A theme that will come up in Creeds 2 and 3. You know, build your own legacy. And inside the box is a pair of, is a pair of boxing shorts. And, yeah, it's a pair, a pair of shorts. On the front, it says Creed. On the back, it says Johnson, which is a nod to how Adonis has sort of grown out of his, you know, Adonis Johnson, you know, like I'm, you know, not a creed and, you know, I'm Adonis Johnson. I just want to make it on my own. And, you know, now he's stepping forward into his identity as a creed, his identity as Adonis Creed. You know, I am no longer Adonis Johnson. I am Adonis Creed. I am a boxer like my father before me. You know. So, so yeah, creating create, you know, being able to build build his own legacy while also acknowledging and respecting the legacy of his father. And you know, and then Rocky gives him a pep talk right before the fight. He says, you know, I can see that look in your eye. You're determined. You're going to you know, you're going to go out there and you're going to win this championship. But do it not for me, not for your father's memory, but do it for yourself. You know, do it for yourself. And then, you know, Rocky, you know, ugh, not Rocky. <laughs> uh, Creed, you know, Creed, he goes, he walks on, walks, walks out, walks out into the, into the ring where he's pretty much booed by everybody in the, in the stands, you know, because, because this fight is in, is in Liverpool, England. It's, a, it's in, it's in England. It's not in the United States. And it's an HBO, I think it's an HBO pay-per-view match. Um, Max Kellerman does show up. He's he's one of he's one of the analysts. He's one one of the commentators for the fight. Uh, Max Kellerman, who we who we last saw in Rocky Balboa. Um, he's the only he's the only real life commentator that I can really think of that shows up in this movie. I'm, I'm sure he's not the only one, you know. Um, ESPN scholars can feel free to point out anybody who I missed. And then when Conlon, when Conlon shows, when Conlon shows up, when Conlon walk, walks into the ring, it's, you know, an uproar of applause. There's like a fire breather. It's like a whole like spectacle. Him walking, him walking into the ring, kind of similar to Apollo Creed's entrance, kind of similar to Apollo Creed's entrance in the first Rocky movie. Whereas Rocky's entrance was more kind of low key, he's kind of a, he's kind of again, you know, he's a local, he was a local fighter, you know. Adonis Creed was more low key, not as flashy and flamboyant. Um, they get to the ring, and the fight. They get to the ring, and uh, the fight begins, and there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of back and forth. the the first The first round, uh, I think I think the first round in total, like Creed only lands like maybe one solid punch on on Conlon, and and you know af after the after the second round, af after the second round, um, you know Rocky tells him, take this round, take it one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. Which has been one of the recurring sayings in Rocky's uh, training, in Rocky's training and Rocky's coaching. You know, one one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. And after, and and uh, Conlon actually knocks Creed down once or twice. Um, I think he like actually, actually like knocks him down. He was like down for the count, maybe once. And during and while Creed is down, I think he's down for maybe I don't remember the exact count, but while he's down we see flashbacks to a few key 
scenes in the movie along with one shot from the very first fight in uh, Rocky, you know, between Rocky and Apollo. And after that last shot, you know, Creed all of a sudden wakes up. You know, he was like, he was like down and out. And then all of a sudden he like gets like a second wind. Like he, you know, gets up and you know, he's ready to, he's ready to continue. I think that was in maybe the 11th round. And, you know, at some point, I think, I think a after the 11th round, like his left eye was shut. So while he's got Stitch kind of tapping the back of his, tapping the back of his neck, they have a doctor come over and cover his right eye and tell him how many fingers am I holding up and he's holding up four fingers so then Stitch taps r taps Creed's neck four times he says like four and then he says two and you know Rocky's like you know hey you're injured I've seen this before I should have stopped the fight when your dad was in the ring I'm stopping I'm stopping this fight now to which to which Creed says no don't stop it and then to which Rocky says, why? And then Adonis says, you know, I have to prove it. I have to prove that I'm not a mistake. And then the Rocky theme plays. And then Rocky says how, you know, I never got a chance to thank your father for helping me after, after Mickey died. But for what you've done for me is nothing compared to that. You see, you've taught me how to keep fighting. And I'm going to go back home and I'm going to fight this thing. But I need you to go and knock this guy out. Say it with me. I'm going to go knock this guy out. All right? Like it's you versus you. He's just in the way. It's you versus you. So the final round begins and you know we see Ro we see Creed um Max Kellerman and, and the other, and the other commentators they point out how Creed is really sort of switching back and forth between like Rocky style, you know, he's like going to the body like Rocky Balboa and going up top like Apollo Creed and you know after everything like at the very last second Creed knocks down Conlon and the rule is you cannot be saved by the bell in the 12th and final round so Conlon actually does get knocked down and you know there's no time left and in order to retain his, um, in order to retain his uh, championship, he has to get up. So Conlon's down for the count, but he does get up, and the fight's over. And uh, you know they have both, they both gone the distance. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> they've both gone the distance, and. You know, it's come to a split decision, and the judges voted in favor of Pretty Ricky Conlon. So Conlon is still the heavyweight champion of the world, despite Rocky, despite Creed's, you know, best effort. You know, despite Creed's best efforts, you know, Conlon is still the heavyweight champion. And before Conlon leaves the ring, he goes over to Creed and says, "You put up a really good fight." You are the future of this division. You wear that name with pride. To which Creed responds, "Respect." You know, so that so that was that was that was Conlon's way of saying, you know, good luck, good you know, good good luck in your boxing career. You are the future of this division. You put up a great fight. You have officially earned my respect. Now, like you know, Creed. Although Creed, you know, I think the the, the way the way that the commentators put it was like. Conlon wins the fight, Creed wins the night. Cause even after, you know, Conlon has left the ring and, you know, Creed says how, you know, I wanna I just wanna thank my mom who's home. And you know, even though she's probably even though she's probably mad at me for doing this, um, you know, I wanna thank I wanna thank every wanna thank all my supporters, I wanna thank my dad, you know. So and then the spectators nobody wants to leave. You know, he gets a standing ovation. Everybody's chanting, Creed, 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 Creed. And this echoes... And this echoes both the first Rocky movie. You know, this echoes Rocky when Rocky went the distance against Apollo. And it went to a split decision. Again, Apollo won the fight. Rocky won the night. Because I think the crowd was still chanting for Rocky. 
and Rocky Balboa. If you guys remember last week when we did when we did Rocky Balboa, we saw how Mason Dixon won the fight. Rocky won the night because everybody everybody was chanting for Rocky. You know, just like in Creed, Conlon won the fight. Creed won the night. He went the distance, and everybody chanted Creed, 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 Creed. So the movie ends with. Um, Rocky and Adonis, as they hike up those steps, as they they hike they hike up those steps from uh, from the from the Rocky franchise. You know, we see them not even run, just walk up those steps, and they look out at the city of Philadelphia. And Rocky says, "You know, if you look closely, you can see your whole you can see your whole future. You you can you you can you can see your whole life if you look close enough." Rocky says, you know, my life looks not bad at all. To which Creed says, yeah, not bad at all. Um, before I end this segment, I did want to point out that there was a scene that I forgot to mention where it was an homage to, I think, Rocky II, the scene where Rocky is followed by the crowd, you know, the whole crowd, like they follow him up the steps. Um... <laughs> It was, um, there's a scene where Creed runs over to the Front Street Gym, he runs over to meet Rocky, and a bunch of guys on ATVs, they all follow him, he's got this like crowd of like motorcycles and ATVs following him, and then Creed's yelling like, let's go Rock, let's go, it's time to train, so, so yeah. On to the themes and analysis. So this movie deals with the themes of legacy and uh, determination. You know, legacy, determination, and lighting the next torch. And we see the theme of legacy being that your legacy is more than just a name. You know, it's more than just a name and Adonis being able to grow into his identity as a Creed, going from denying his kinship to his father, denying, denying his father, and going around saying, I'm Adonis, I'm Adonis Johnson instead of Adonis Creed, to then growing into his identity as Adonis Creed, as a Creed, and being able to build his own legacy from there. And then also... Passing the torch, we see how Rocky is being able to not 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 pass the torch, but like lighting the torch of Adonis Creed. You know, lighting the torch of the next generation. As Rocky's old at this point, he's noticeably, you know, maybe in his seventies at this point. He is lighting the torch of young Adonis Creed, you know, young prospect who's got a future, and. And yeah, this movie is a bit similar to Rocky in that it does exist within the Rocky universe. Uh, Creed is not Rocky Seven. I think um, Ryan, either Ryan Coogler or Sylvester Stallone. Like I remember when this movie came out. This movie, this movie came out 2015. They they put a strong emphasis on this is not Rocky Seven. And yeah, not Rocky Seven, and uh, how 
Creed is his own uh, character, and that we're able to tell their own story, uh, though there are some similarities between between Rocky and Creed. They were able to tell a similar story within the same universe, but a new character and in the 21st century. So they're bringing this Rocky franchise into the 21st century, this Rocky universe into the... Well, I guess you could technically say they brought it into the 21st century with Rocky Balboa, but they're bringing it in with a new set of eyes, you know, new director, um, a new star, you know, Michael B. Jordan, who was on the rise in 20, 2015. I mean, he had Fantastic Four and then Creed, so he was on the rise. They got some new blood. Got some new blood while also maintaining whatever old blood that they may have. You know, the, the, old, the old heads like, you know, Stallone being able to contribute in any way that he could. So, overall... I think it was a really, really fun movie, a really great movie. Um, I recommend you, you guys, all you guys, check it out. If you, if you love, if you like the Creed movies, um, no. <laughs> if you liked the Rocky movies, if you liked our Rocky series, you know, Rockies one through six, then you definitely, definitely, definitely gonna love Creed. All right. On to Creed Plus. So Creed was nominated for a bunch of awards. Um, uh, at the Academy Awards, uh, 2016 nominee for the Oscar for Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, Jupiter Award, 2017 nominee, uh, Jupiter Award Best International Actor, Sylvester Stallone. Satellite Awards, 2016 nominee, 20, 2016 nominee uh, Satellite Award Best Actor in a Supporting Role, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, NAACP Image Awards, uh, 2016, uh, Creed was nominated for the 2016 uh, Image Award, NAACP. Uh, Outstanding Motion Picture, uh, 20, 2016 uh, winner for the, for the Image Award for um, Outstanding Motion Picture, that was uh, Michael B. Jordan. Uh, he also won Outstanding Actor in a Motion Picture picture right Michael B Jordan uh, Felicia Rashad was uh, nominated for the 2016 image award for outstanding supporting actress in a motion picture Tessa Thompson won outstanding act outstanding supporting actress in a motion picture uh, Ryan Coogler and Aaron Covington won outstanding writing in a motion picture in a theatrical motion picture um, during the yeah, 2016 Image Awards. All right, on to the uh, Globe, Golden Globes. Sylvester Stallone might have been included in that writing trio. On to the Golden Globes. Sylvester Stallone won Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role in a Motion Picture. Uh, Critics' Choice Awards. Sylvester Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Houston Film Critics Society Awards. Sylvester Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Or, or no, um, he was nominated for the Best Supporting Actor at the 2000 at the 2016 uh, HFCS Awards. Houston Film Critics Society. Shout out to the Houston Film Critics Society and any and all of my listeners in the great state of Texas, in the city of Houston. What's up? Uh, at the Black Reel Awards, Michael B. Jordan won uh, Outstanding Actor in a Motion Picture. Tessa Thompson won Outstanding Supporting, Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture. Ryan Coogler won Outstanding Director in a Motion Picture. Uh, Ludwig Jorgensen 
one outstanding score. Aaron Covington and Ryan Coogler won outstanding original or adapted screenplay. This is a uh, Black Reel Awards. Uh, North Carolina Film Asso Film North Carolina Film Critics Association. Sylvester Stallone won Best Supporting Actor, or he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Central Ohio Film Critics Association. So, uh, Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Kafka Central Ohio Film Critics Association Awards at the Kafka Awards in 2016. National Society of Film Critics Awards. Uh, shout out to anybody at the NSFC. Um, just uh, email me. I will send you my resume. I would love to join the National Society of Film Critics. Michael B. Jordan won Best Actor at the NSFC Awards in 2016. And Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Seattle Film Critics Association. Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Actor. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Ludwig Jorgensen won Beat Music, Original Song. And, oh no, Ludwig Jorgensen and Tessa Thompson won uh, Beat Music slash Original Song for the song Grip that was used in uh, Creed. Georgia Film Critics Association. Georgia, the state that I was born in, I should definitely be a member. <laughs> I would love to visit the, love to attend the Georgia Film Critics Association Awards, the GAFCAs, one of these days. You know, I don't know if I mentioned that I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, um, but grew up in Connecticut. So, <laughs> um, 2016, Ryan Coogler was nominated for Best Director. Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Actor. Sylvester Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Denver Film Critics Society. I know there's a lot of these guys. Um, <laughs> I do apologize. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Stallone won the, Mon the Montecito Award. Uh, International Film Music Critics Award. The IFMCA Awards. Ludwig Jorgensen was nominated for Best Original Score for a Drama Film. Oklahoma Film Critics Circle Awards. Stallone won, Stallone won Best Supporting Actor, uh, tied with Michael Keaton for Spotlight. Spotlight, another movie that I... is on my list of movies to <laughs> review. Um, Iowa Film Critics Awards. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the IFC's, I IFC Awards. Motion Picture Sound Editors. Uh, Ronald J. Webb, who's the music editor on this film. He was nominated for Best Sound Editing, uh, Music in a Featured Film, All Deaf Movie Awards, uh, Creed won Best Picture, or no, Creed, Creed was nominated for Best Picture at the All Deaf Movie Awards, Michael B. Jordan won Best Actor, Ryan Coogler won Best Director, Tessa Thompson was nominated for Best Actress, Felicia Rashad was also nominated for Best Actress. At the Empire Awards in the United Kingdom. Uh, shout out to my listeners across the pond. Shout out to my listeners in the UK. Um, Jerry O. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Actor. Uh, Ryan Coogler was nominated for Best Director. Online Film and Television Association. At the OFTA Film Awards, Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and Creed was nominated for Most Cinematic Moment, uh, One Fight, A Single Take. Probably refer. I think I think they're referring to the the first fight in the movie, the first on-screen fight, the the fight in Mexico. I think it was a single. Must have been a single take. Uh, MTV Movie and TV Awards nominated Creed for Movie of the Year and nominated Michael B. Jordan for Best Male Performance. I also understand that Michael B. Jordan won the MTV Movie Award for Best Villain for Killmonger in 2018's Black Panther. AARP Movies for Grown Ups Awards. <laughs> okay, the fact that AARP has a movie award. <laughs> 
AARP Movies for Grown Ups Awards. Uh, Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, at the Gold Derby Awards, Stallone was also Stallone won Supporting Actor at the Golden at the Gold Derby Awards. BET Awards, Michael B. Jordan won Best Actor. Um, for 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 not only Creed but also as I mentioned for Fantastic Four or Fan Four Stick, uh, he won Best Actor for both of those movies. And Creed was nominated for Best Movie at the BET Awards in 2016. Teen Choice Awards. This movie was nominated for Choice Movie Drama. Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Choice Movie Actor. Tessa Thompson was nominated for Choice Movie Actress. Guild of Music Supervisors Awards. Uh, Gabe Hilfer was nominated for Best Music Supervision for a film budgeted over $25 million. Whew, that is oddly specific. Um, <laughs> these awards, ceremonies, these awards, like, bear with me, guys. Uh, the Ho Chi Film Awards. Uh, Ryan Coogler won Best Foreign Language Film. Uh, the Golden Trailer Awards. Creed won Best Graphics in a TV Spot. I know it was nominated for Best Graphics in a TV Spot. Alliance of Women Film Journalists. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the EDA Awards. EDA Awards. Um, the Christopher Awards. Um, Christopher at, at the Christopher Awards. Um, Let's see. Wow, there's, there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, Ryan Coogler, I guess, won for... I guess, won feature films. Ryan Coogler for writing for writing and directing Creed. Uh, Aaron Covington for writing. Uh, Robert Chartoff as producer. Sylvester Stallone as producer. William Chartoff as producer. Charles Winkler. Charles, and D Charles David, and Erwin Winkler were all producers on this film. Uh, Location Managers Guild International Awards. <laughs> LMGI Awards. <laughs> Patricia Taggart and Dan Gorman were nominated for Outstanding Locations in a Contemporary Film. I didn't even know that, like, location... that movies and locations got awards. Okay, um, lo location movies, you know. National Board of Review USA. Uh, Stallone won Best Supporting Actor at the NBR Awards, National Board of Review. Board of Review. And Creed won Top Films at the NBR Awards. Los Angeles Film Critics Association Awards. Shout out to my listeners in LA. Um, Hollywood. Uh, shout out to all my listeners who are part of the Screen Actors Guild, SAG AFTRA, WGA. We support you. We stand with you. Ryan Coogler won. A new generation, oh, won the New Generation Award at the Los Angeles Film Critics Association. Uh, Boston Online Film Critics Association, the BAFCA Awards. Michael B. Jordan won Best Actor. And Sylvester Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Creed was nominated for Best Film. Came in second place. Washington, D.C. Area Film Critics Association Awards. Shout out to my listeners in DC. It's gonna be a lot of shout outs in this list, okay? And I'm in un, I'm I'm hundred percent I'm a hundred percent here for it. If this is my longest episode, so be it. <laughs> um Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. African American Film Critics Association. Why am I not a member of the AAFCA? Why am I not a member? Anybody from the African American Film Critics Association, if you're listening. My name is Morgan Cobbs. I have a podcast called Cobbs Corner. Please send me an email. I would love to join. Ryan Coogler won Best Director at the AAFCA Awards. Tessa Thompson won Best Supporting Actress. Michael B. Jordan won Breakthrough Performance. Creed was nominated, but was and Creed was nominated for Best Picture. Online Film Critics Society Awards. Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Actor. 
Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. San Francisco Film Critics Circle. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, Southeastern Film Critics Association Awards. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. St. Louis Film Critics Association. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. And Ryan Coogler and Aaron Covington won Best Adapted Screenplay at the 2015 SLFCA Awards, St. Louis Film Critics Association Awards. Shout out to my listeners in St. Louis. Uh, Special Merit. Uh, Creed won the Special Merit for Best Scene, Cinematic Technique, or Other Memorable Aspect or Moment for Adonis' First Pro Fight. Chicago Film Critics Association Awards nominated Stallone for Best Supporting Actor. Nominated at the IndieWire Critics Poll. In IndieWire Critics Poll, um, Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Lead Actor. He came in third place. Tessa Thompson was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, 10th place. Stallone nominated for Best Supporting Actor, 2nd place. Ludwig, Ludwig Göransson nominated for Best Original Score or Soundtrack, 10th place. Um, best Editing best editing by Claudia Castello and Michael P. Shaver. Um... They were nominated for Best Editing. Eighth place, Austin Film Critics Association. Again, another film critic association in the state of Texas. Shout out to my listeners in Austin. What's up? Michael B. Jordan, Best Actor, was nominated for Best Actor. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Creed was nominated for Best Film, came in eighth place. Las Vegas Film Critics Society Awards. One of these years, I'm going to Las Vegas... Just going to, to Consumer Electronics Show, CES. So I'll go there for CES. I am not gambling at all. You know, Consumer Electronics Show, it's in January. So, one of these years. Creed was nominated for Best Sierra Award, for Best, Best Picture at the, uh, for the Sierra Award, 2015 nominee for the Sierra Award. Um, Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Black Film Critics Circle Awards. Again, why am I not a member? Um, <laughs> uh, Michael B. Jordan won... Well, Creed won Best Picture. Michael B. Jordan won Best Actor. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Tessa Thompson won Best Supporting Actress. Kansas City Film Critics Circle Awards. Stallone won... Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Boston Society of Film Critics Awards. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. And Ludwig Jorgensen was nominated for Best Use of Music in a Film. Utah Film Critics Association Awards. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor. Vancouver Film Critics Circle. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Florida Film Critics Circle Awards. Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Phoenix Critics Circle. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor, Village Voice Film Poll. Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He came in second place. And Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He also came in second place. Golden Schmoes Awards. Um, Creed won Biggest Surprise of the Year. And My Michael B. Jordan was nominated for Best Actor of the Year. Stallone won Best Supporting Actor of the Year. O Awards, Circuit Community Awards. Stallone won uh, Best Actor in a Supporting Role. And Honorable Mentions. Uh, Creed, Creed was given an Honorable Mention for the, next, for the next 10 Best Picture Contenders. So Honorable Mention at that awards show. Very last award. Can't believe we made it to the end of this list. Um, <laughs> the IGN Summer Movie Awards. Creed was nominated for Best Drama Movie. That is all the awards. That is the longest awards list I have done in the history of this podcast. And hopefully, we'll ever do. Alright. <laughs> but hey, it's a lot of awards, a lot of nominations, which is great. Which is great. 
Yeah, it's great. Trivia! Just as the film was entering pre-production, Sylvester Stallone's oldest son, Sage Stallone, died of a heart attack. Stallone has admitted that the loss almost sent him into a full breakdown, but Ryan Coogler was eventually able to convince him to use the film as a dedication to Sage, focusing specifically on the father-son relationships that appear in it. Although initially resistant, Stallone said at the Golden Globes that Creed helped him cope with Sage's death. If you guys remember, Sage Stallone played Rocky Jr. in Rocky V. You know, in Rocky V, he starred as um, Rocky Balboa's son. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really it's really tough. You know, I, I can I can I hope and pray that nothing of the sort ever happens. You know. To me, or to any, or to, to any, to anyone listening who's a, who, who's a parent, although I'm not a parent, um, you know, I can't imagine the pain of losing a child. You know, I, I'd argue that that's more painful than losing a parent. I would say, you know? and that, and 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 that's a pain that I hope and pray that none of you ever have to experience. Um, but so yeah, in a way. Creed is sort of an homage to the late Sage Stallone. While training, Adonis wears a shirt with the message, Why do I want to fight? Because I can't sing and dance. <laughs> this was a line from Rocky to Adrian on their ice skating date in the first Rocky, 1976. Nice homage to the first Rocky movie. Um, <laughs> I did not notice that. I, I actually did not notice that. Um, but thank you to... Whoever it is that pointed that out, uh, you know who you are. Yeah, salute. Sylvester Stallone requested that Michael B. Jordan wear the famous American flag trunks that Apollo Creed wore in Rocky, and Rocky wore in Rocky Three, and Rocky wore in Rocky Three and Rocky Four to keep tradition in the Rocky universe. Okay, well, yeah, I mean that that was that was smart, you know. Again, having it as the Rocky universe, you know, again. This is not Rocky 7, but it's a movie that exists within the Rocky universe. So yeah, nice keeping up with tradition. Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed, gave his strong endorsement to the movie and Michael B. Jordan's performance. Jordan felt extremely honored. Yes, for you to receive the blessing of your, I guess, your on-screen, your on-screen late father, you know, to get the endorsement of the actor who played him as well, it's like, it, 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 it is an honor. It's a great honor. This is the first film in the Rocky se the quote-unquote Rocky series that is not written by Sylvester Stallone. True. Very, very true. You know, Stallone, he got his start as a writer. You know, I mean, everybody knows him as, as an actor. I mean, even if you haven't seen any of the Rocky movies... You've seen Sylvester Stallone, okay? I mean, the man has been... He showed up everywhere. He showed up in Guardians of the Galaxy, um, you know, Expendables 4 just came out. You know, he's been all over, but I feel like people don't really realize that he got his start writing. You know, really, he's a writer, you know, before he was acting, so... A bit of goofs. Continuity. In the beginning, when Adonis is typing his letter of resignation, he is wearing a black tie. When he turns his resignation into his boss, his tie is blue. When he goes home and Marianne asks him how his new job is, he's wearing the black tie again. So I guess that was probably a mistake on behalf of the props department that they ended up correcting. When Rocky is in the basement of the restaurant talking to Creed about, about the fight, Rocky's sweatshirt zipper goes up then comes back down then goes then goes up again <laughs> i think that's a common gag in like any scene where any scene of dialogue where somebody's wearing a hoodie the zipper always goes up down up down and <laughs> towards the end of the movie after adonis shows up at bianca's apartment door the top deadbolt is already in the unlocked position north to south adonis and bianca continue to dialogue 
and the dead bull remains in the same position. Yet just before Bianca finally lets Adonis in, the dead bull is suddenly in the locked position, east to west, and Bianca ends up unlocking it north to south to let him in. Alright, well. <laughs> to the locksmiths uh, listening, salute to any locksmiths that listen to Cobb's Corner. Uh, thank you for pointing that out to us. When Adonis tries on his father's shorts, there is a stain on the mirror. Later on, the stain mirac mysteriously disappears without anyone cleaning it. Movie magic. <laughs> Factual errors. The fight between Creed and Conlon is set at Goodison Park in England. The commentator states 100,000 fans are on their feet. Goodison Park only has a seating capacity of around 39,500. Again, thank you to my listeners across the pond who pointed this out. Um, anyone who works at Goodison Park in England, thank you for pointing this out to us. Again, movie magic, creative liberties. You know. We're going to reveal some mistakes here. During the final fight, it's dark at Goodison Park. Mary Ann Creed is watching from her home in L.A. eight hours behind in time. It should not be dark in L.A. at this time. Yep, yep. Absolutely right. Los Angeles is eight hours behind London, so it should not be dark, but I guess... <laughs> Again, create creative liberties, uh, but yeah, that's definitely a mistake on behalf of the writers. You know. Anachronisms. In the scene set in 1998, the juvenile hall has signs using the typeface Calibri, which was not released to the public until 2007. Wow. Whew. Not released until 2007. Um, time travel exists within the Rocky universe, I guess. Um, after leaving the dressing room to enter the arena at Goodison Park, uh, Merci Merseyside, England, Goodison Park, Merseyside, England. I don't know if I mispronounced that pronunciation. Um, listeners from England, feel free to correct me. An American exit sign with red text can be seen above the door. UK exit signs are green with a pictorial of a man on a door. This was clearly not shot in the UK. <laughs> yes, clear, clearly this was not shot in the UK. Um... Then again, you know, us Americans, like how many of us have actually been to the United Kingdom? I have, but, you know, <clears throat> Americans, am I right? Um, when Adonis is at the Delphi Gym, when, which is supposed to be in Los Angeles, you can see a Pathmark behind Adonis on the other side of the street. Pathmark was a supermarket chain exclusive to the Northeast. Okay, well, another factual error. Before the final fight, there is a scene which apparently takes place in the dressing rooms of Goodison Park, uh, Merseyside, side, United Kingdom. However, an American two-pin plug socket can be seen on one of the walls. <laughs> it's like, he just didn't go, didn't go into any, didn't, you didn't, man, did not make any effort to um, hide that up, to cover that up, to hide it. Nothing. So, yeah. Props department, we see you. Quotes. Rocky Balboa, one step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. One of the key quotes in the movie. Rocky, pointing toward Adonis' reflection in the mirror, that's the toughest opponent you're ever going to have to fix. Very, very true. It's very, very true. It's you versus you. You versus you. Time takes everybody out. Time's undefeated. True. Time is undefeated. Balboa. Creed takes... Creed takes cell phone photo of boxing drills and walks off. Hey, don't you want this? Johnson. Holds out the cell phone. It's on this. Balboa. What if you lose it? Johnson. It's already in the cloud. Balboa looks in the sky confused. What cloud? 
<laughs> generation gap, you know, like, hey, uh, what cloud? You know, you talk about the cloud? What? Referring, of course, to cloud storage. Um, Balboa, you can't learn anything when you're talking. That's a fact of life. As long as you're talking, you're not listening. It's one of my favorite Bal Balboa quotes. Of course, it's like a top five quote. As long as you're talking, you're not listening. I tell my students the same thing. Um, <laughs> User review, 8 out of 10 stars. Stallone should have won the Oscar. Continuing my plan to watch every Sly movie in order, I come to Creed. Plot in a paragraph. Rocky Balboa serves as a trainer and mentor to Adonis Johnson, the son of his late friend and former rival Apollo Creed. Long rumored, Sly publicly turned this movie down one more on more than one occasion, and I was in the camp that was glad he did. I didn't want anything ruining the ending to Rocky Balboa, which for this zoner was perfect. However, a few flops at the domestic box office later, and it's back to Rocky. And it is the smartest decision he made in years, winning the Golden Globe and taking him all the way to the Oscars. I still say he should have won. Whilst I enjoy Creed immer immensely, I can see both sides of the argument regarding this movie. I'll get what I didn't like out of the way first. Whilst I love the nods and references, I thought it literally borrowed too heavily from the first movie from me. Uh, just just a few. The, the champ's opponent breaking something prior to the fight, and the champ needing an opponent quick, and said opponent is chosen because of his name. The fighters needing separating at the end of the second round, a 14th round knockdown with the champ turning his back to celebrate as the hero gets up the result of the fight. It undid all the Rocky slash Robert relationship restored by the end of Balboa. How did the vultures of the gutter press not pick up on how sick Rocky was looking and did Robert not see any pics of his dad in the papers or on TV and think he's not looking too well, I'll give him a call. I didn't relate to Adonis, nobody's fault, but when Rocky wasn't on screen, especially early on, I wasn't that interested and was tempted to reach for the remote to run it forward to the next time Rocky was featured. As someone who has lost close uh, too many family members and loved ones to cancer, and been with them all the way through it, the scenes of Rocky receiving his treatment, struggling to the toilet, and needing to be tucked in struck me far too close to home as I thought they may. Tony Belly was intimidating enough, but thought his physique lacked, and he almost looked fat next to Jordan. Now on to the good. Sly is fantastic and is totally worthy of the Golden Globe win and Oscar nomination. It's defiantly an Oscar worthy, so, so, f so for him not to win was guttering. He was the best thing in the movie and when he wasn't on screen I found myself thinking when is Rocky coming back into it? Although I think his Balboa performance was better, the it wasn't supposed to be like this Pauly scene in the meat house and the it ain't about how hard you hit speech comes to mind and it could be argued Copeland is too. Okay. I thought all the cast were good, especially Jordan, and I really liked Rashad, even if she wasn't even if she was underused. I thought it would be her at the hotel room door the night before the fight, meaning Rocky finally called her. I love I loved it when Gonna Fly Now kicked in during the start of the final round. I know it's not to everyone's taste, but I enjoyed the score and all the fight scenes were well shot too. Though I'm not quite sure how it was a split decision. He seemed well beat to me. The scenes that cried the scenes that I cried at uh, one when Rocky got the news. Two, put everything that you got in my life in a bowl. Everything, but everything that was good in my life in a bowl. Three, seeing Rocky struggle during the training montage. Four, you're a creed and I love you, kid. And the Rocky music kicked in. Five, seeing Rocky struggling up the steps. 
it was nice to see Sly playing Rocky again, and it's and it is a very touching movie that re reduced me to tears more than once. It's a well-made, entertaining movie, and I do enjoy it. But I don't feel the need to revisit this movie that often. I think my 10-year-old son summed it up best. When I suggested watching this, he questioned why I wanted to watch it, so I asked why not. And he replied, if I want to watch a Rocky movie, I'll watch one of the real ones. <laughs> Alright, so so yeah, I mean, that that's a uh, user review. Um, again, 8 out of 10 stars, um, but a very brutally honest uh, movie. I can understand how, yes, this movie did kind of borrow a lot from the first Rocky movie. I can see the similarities. I actually... <laughs> hadn't seen those similarities initially um but yeah i definitely see those similarities and yeah although i do think that creed is a great movie in its own right i will say that at least the first creed it doesn't hold a candle to the first rocky movie um it's not as bad i would it's not as bad as rocky 5 i mean rocky 5 is definitely the worst of the rocky uh franchise but yeah, Creed, again, it's a different kind of movie. Like it's, you know, we're moving past the Rocky era and into the Creed era. So of course they might borrow some things here and there or pay homage. Pay homage while also being able to separate themselves from the Rocky franchise, being able to say, this is not Rocky 7. So thank you to the uh, user who gave us that review on IMDb. Overall, IMDb rating, 7.6 out of 10 stars. Letterbox score, 3.8 out of 5 stars. Official uh, details for the movie, it was released on November 25th, 2015 in the United States. Um, official sites, MGM.com, and there's an Instagram. It was released in both English and Spanish, also known as Taidam Huyen Toai. Not sure what language that is. Uh, filming locations, Gooding, uh, Goodison Park, uh, Goodison Road, Walton, Liverpool, Meyer Side, England, United Kingdom. Production companies, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, MGM. They've done every Rocky movie and now the Creed movies, uh, Warner Bros. and New Line Cinema. Box office. The movie had an estimated budget of $35 million and it grossed in the US and Canada alone, 109, 109 uh, million dollars, almost 110 million dollars domestically in US and Canada. Uh, opening weekend, domestically, it made 29.6 million, so almost 30 million dollars. Opening weekend, um, worldwide, the movie grossed a total of 173 million dollars. Rotten Tomatoes, tomato meter score 95%, audience score 89%. I'm maybe with the audience on this on this one because again, you know, Creed, it's not as good of a film as like, you know, the first Rocky movie and so. It's a great movie, but it's not the best of the best. So, critics consensus. Creed brings the Rocky franchise off the mat for a surprisingly effective seventh round that extends the boxer saga in interesting new directions while staying true to its classic predecessor's roots. Couldn't have said it better myself. Where to watch? You can rent Creed on Vudu, Apple TV, or buy it on Vudu, Amazon Prime, Video, or Apple TV. But again, to my returning listeners, you know I'm old school, you know I watch Creed, I have it on DVD. DVD. So, that is all I've got for uh, this review of Creed. If you liked what you heard today, then don't forget to give us a review on your favorite podcast listening platform. If you've got a movie or movie series that you would like us to review next, then all you got to do is hit me up on Instagram or TikTok. You can also email me at cobscornerpodcast at gmail.com. All of that information is in the show notes below. If you made it to the end of this episode, I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to turn on those post notifications to get notified when I post. And tune in to Talk Time with Morgan Cobbs Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Chook Standard Time live on YouTube. 
available everywhere else the next day. I hope you guys enjoyed your stay here at Cobb's Corner, and I'll talk to all of you in the next episode. Peace.